somebody needed to direct, and I became more interested in directing. I suppose the control freak thing, uh -huh. um, and I became really interested in the tech and the design and stuff. But I think that whole idea of theatre summers escape has kind of always followed me, and is still kind of in the work that I do. And then I ended up uh, in Birmingham University um, for ten years, and then Bath for a year. Didn't uh -huh. like that at all. That was a bad experience for so many reasons and ended up coming back to the Midlands because I like the Midlands I ended up I've been at Coventry yeah, now yeah. 17 years so. right uh -huh. and it's interesting yeah. you know we talk about that mm. sense of reality mm. and breaking that mm. reality and breaking the fourth wall and mm. bringing people with you I've been following some of the stuff that you've been doing and you, and you, you sort of put it out there <laughs> on your Facebook page and it, yeah. it's, it's very pioneering and very challenging and you're working with um, performers who are in different continents yeah, we just worked with my auntie <laughs> recently. So it, it was an accident. It is a weird story behind it. Um, the dean of the university, he'll never see this, so I don't mind saying this, uh, and he's also <laughs> retired, uh, but he was tormenting me to put uh, a lot of the teaching online. And mm -hmm. this was back in 2015. And the students didn't want it online, and theatre was a practical subject. Yes, you know, yeah. And he was getting thoroughly sick of me blocking him and at one point I kind of had this moment of self-doubt where I thought well maybe I'm just getting really old and maybe the students do want it online so I went to the students and I went what do you think about having these classes online and they went we're paying nine and a half grand but uh -huh. you're teaching us and I went back to him and I said no so then he finally said he went to a conference and he said I met this really uh, interesting woman called Tina Syria uh, from Finland and uh, she's an expert on acting in a foreign language. So this is what happens when an actor has to act in a foreign language, but they don't know the foreign language what yes. they do. And I went, that's very nice of you to go to these conferences. I have. <laughs> and uh, he said she would give a really good lecture for you. I was teaching a module called Global Theatres. And mm -hmm. said it would be really good for a module. And fine, give me your email. And he went, we'll pay for you to go to Finland. This is where he made his mistake, you see. <laughs> and I thought... You pay for me to go to Finland. I've never been to Finland. This is this is it. They're definitely a bonus territory now. Holiday, and so I went, and uh, thinking this is a complete waste of money to get a lecture, you know. But I went over, and they were not interested in giving a lecture. They were interested in collaborating. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do Shakespeare, and it's not, but it's not brilliant collaboration. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, that's so much of what it's all about. Really, if he hadn't it? sent us over, we wouldn't have gone for a drink, and then we wouldn't have come up with this idea. Yeah, yeah. So I arrived back, going, "We're going to do Shakespeare's Coriolanus." And he went, how? And we, went, we, we have no idea. Something to do with computers. Yeah, Some, something online. And it's online something you online. We're going and to we, deliver we online. had a year to work that out, and it was really sweaty time. And we yeah. didn't get a lot of help. We ended up in a wind tunnel. Initially, it was going to be computers and Skype. The students were just going to be with each other on Skype, do the same. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't get a computer room. I started to kind of ask people, and everybody was going, can't help you, can't help you. It's impossible. You won't be able... And one expert in kind of online said, you can't do synchronous work. I was going because to say, of yeah, because it's, of the it's delay, the latency is there. And I was going back to the Finns going, we can't do this. We can't do this. And then they came over to Coventry, and we had like a, a day. There were some people... We have a place called the Disruptive Media Lab, who were like these kind of guys who think crazy ideas. And I went on my hands and knees to them and went please, for the love of God, help me. And they put me in the right direction of technicians and people. And we couldn't get any space. Like, we couldn't use our theatre because we had chosen it. So we ended up in a wind tunnel, which was brilliant because then we learned all kinds of things about echo cancellation uh -huh, uh -huh. and all this. And we did it, and it worked better than we thought. It was like life-size rear projection. We hadn't cracked latency then, but we did enough to know that it had potential. Expl paint a picture of it because... You know in your head what you're seeing. Well, a a lot of people, of I, I used to get really insulted by this, but it's glorified Zoom, but it's not glorified Zoom. So if you imagine like a life-size rear projection screen where the actors are, basically the other side of the room is another country. Yeah, yeah. And you can make eye contact, you can do everything but touch. And we even use directional sounds, so we use... We mic up the room as if it's a real space, so the further so you, you are from the other actor, the more you have to project. Yeah, yeah. So we don't radio mic the actors. Yeah. And the speakers so you're, are behind you're the, the screen. getting the sound of the, the, the space. Yeah, and they're, so you're living in the space. And they move around, and yeah. the sound moves yeah. around with them. And how do you get the eye lines? It's to do with, again, this is something we discovered by accident. When we were trying to line up the camera uh, and the projector, we discovered that if the camera is kind of just a bit above the average person's waist on, on both world, sides, the uh, uh, that when you're in the middle of the room, you make an eye contact. And the closer you get, the more you have to kind of look yes, at yeah, the camera. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in the middle of the room, you can, you know, that point angle, and you that can angle point, you can, go, you can move that chair. Uh -huh. 
So there is a kind of trick to acting. The students always kind of describe it as a mix of stage and screen acting mm -hmm. because you're doing stage acting, but then you can also use the camera. And after the first year, we kind of went, this is really brilliant. We love it. And then a lot, of, including that dean, went, never do this again. Uh, and again, the Disruptive Media Lab said, we'll fund you the next time but you have to enter for this Reimagine Education Award, uh -huh. which is like the Oscars of higher education. And I went, we're not gonna win this. And they went, we think you might. And it's only an application form. Do it for us and we'll give you money. And we did it and we went to Philadelphia and we won the gold for Arts and Humanities. And we're now 11 awards done. And this thing, that's brilliant. Guardian, Times Higher, we won a double gold in Reimagine two years later. Uh -huh. And we've even run two awards from the Uruguayan Ministry of Culture. But it's not fantastic for a wee fella from the Moorhead Road. It's taken me to places I never would have expected. Like, I've performed King Lear in Hong Kong in a jungle between Hong Kong and Finland. We did the first live motion capture between Finland and Miami. So we did a live actor in a motion capture suit in a virtual set acting with a live actor in Miami. In, and, and when we worked, when we did Miami, uh, we worked with Andy Serkis. So we worked with Gollum, uh -huh, uh -huh. Emperor Snook himself. He's really lovely. So yeah, we try and do it. it it's an absolute passion for me. It's still theater, it's not technology. I make that very clear. Yeah, We're not yeah. interested in the technology and the students couldn't give a damn. The technology is an enabler. The students want to know who we're working with and what's the play. Yeah. Is that if you listen in, like a seashell in the ocean, you can actually hear the last words of Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I love it because it means we can work with some of the best people around the world. Uh -huh. It's a bit more ecologically friendly as well. And that. Does that translate into an audience experience as well? Or is that purely an experience for the performers in the space? We're really interested in rehearsal, but we have done live performances. Like we did for the City of Culture here, to, for Coventry to get the bid, we did a live banquet. So we had a banquet here for big wigs and people with money and a banquet in Finland and they had identical food and identical wine oh, brilliant. and we did a performance for them and it was funny just watching them a, interact. A dual location performance. Dual location so we had it was a bit of King Lear so we did we did three scenes from King Lear I think and we had uh, three actors in Finland three actors over here doing uh -huh. their bit but the more interesting thing was watching the audiences yeah, interact yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they liked it so much we did their winter gala but we didn't do a performance we just had a party in both spaces and yeah. that was terrifying because you can control the performance you yes, can't control yeah. the party and uh, we've done we work with purdue which is in west lafayette which is about 100 miles from chicago and we did a performance of brecht's life of galileo and it was really odd and i have it on film it's a beautiful moment uh, the belgrade theater which is our local theater here there was a woman who works there called kim hackelman who is studied at purdue uh -huh. and she was interesting. She came along to see the performance, and we usually have the audience facing each other because we like them to know yes, it's live, yeah. and there are no tricks. Yeah, and all the way through the show, she's. <laughs> and the minute we finished, her and this Minnesotan run at each other, and there were university mates who'd worked together in the, uh -huh. and one had gone because they knew their friend was in Coventry, and one had gone because they knew their friend was Minnesota, and they all night of going, is that, you know, is that Amy Lynn? Is that? And I, lucky I got that from the two of them just running Brilliant. at each other. Brilliant. And so it's, to me, it's live theatre. It's yeah. not like during the pandemic, we were reduced to Zoom. And I think it hurt me more than anybody else yeah. because I know how good the online stuff can be. But how quickly, how quickly all that Zoom stuff that everybody said was wonderful evaporated. Well, it it actually it's evaporated. It stopped my managers going on about online learning <clears> being the <throat> way forward because they discovered that, you know, again, people want to, go places and yeah. do things and see people and, and see live work and see but you, yeah. you, you did a little piece yesterday on your facebook page mm. about sean and 25 yeah. years since he passed away and you were saying in it there's almost not a day goes by mm. but you go how would sean approach that yeah how would sean deal with that mm. you know sean's contribution to you and your role in theater is alive every day. Yeah, and he's alive. And, and the stuff I'm passing on to students is his stuff. And so in a way, there's people doing stuff influenced by Sean that I don't even know that they're doing it anymore. Mm, mm. Um, Sean always taught me about the importance of the audience. I always think about the audience. You're not self-indulgent as a director. I like to think I'm not. I always think about what do they get? What do they understand? 
are they going to like it? Is that joke working? Is that sad scene working? Is that Sean was always so concerned? And you used to even see him in the audience when he wouldn't watch the play. He's watching. Like this. Yeah, He's like, yeah. And you knew if you were doing well because he looked happy and you knew if you were doing badly because he was like... Yeah. I don't even sit in the audience anymore because I know I've picked up that habit. So yeah. I sit in the light desk. So I always, when I direct a show, I do sound. So yeah. I always do the sound desk because I have a job. And so I'm not worried about what they're doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing. This is the control room. So theatre space down there uh, is kind of a labour of love over many years. So the seats move so they can reassemble this is what they were for our <laughs> students final year projects uh all most of the lighting's down actually for summer maintenance and this is the desk etc <laughs> but again like the students get trained on these desks so we expect like our chief technician will never use this desk apart from designing and plotting during a show the student will and in fact often he's calling he's down there and he's calling out 42 at 3 rem dim blah 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 so our students thankfully can use all this stuff I mean, like are really good at using this stuff and they crew each other's shows so if one show's on and the other cast are on the next week the cast for the show that's on that's not on is the crew so they have to experience both sides of the coin but some of them go off to there's a student called M, romanian student who comes and helps me with open days and i always make her tell this story she says in the first year when Mike said, you're going to have to do lighting, she actually cried. She tells them, she goes, I cried, and I went home, and I cried all night. I did it in front of and I said, tell them what happens now. And she went, I've lit every show in this building for the past two years. When you, when you look back, I have great memories of the art centre as yeah. a space, and a creative space. And Sean teased every sense of emotion out of that space and turned it into a mm. work. He brought me on a, a, a proscenium arts theatre. Yeah. We performed all over. What, what do you remember about those early days in Are They Out yeah. and Shoot Horses, Don't They, and the energy of that group? I just, it was incredible. And like the number of people who've come out of that group who are now professionals, you know, Susan, Eamon Quinn, who I worked with at a theatre company as yeah. well, Peter Ballins, David Pierce, uh, Ray McKinley. Uh, right, yeah. You know, all kind of come out of that. Yeah little group of people like they all went in I, I'm probably the least successful the whole lot because I didn't stick with it professionally I went off to teach it but this is the work uh, you're doing but is I, incredible I, yeah I love it yeah. A, oh, no, I'm glad my journey I wouldn't, different direction. I wouldn't change it there are days when I could stay at home and I could do my paperwork from home and I don't I come in here because and I'll not get the paperwork done because I'll wander and I'll see somebody making something. I'll go, what's that? You know, and I'll that'll be three hours later. Yeah. Or I'll be hauled into a room going, Tom, can you have a look at this? Yeah. And, it, and all of a sudden I'm in the middle of rehearsal and I'm doing something. So to me, it's this is... I fell on my head. With this you didn't, you didn't. How do you take what you're doing and hand that over to groups like Viewpoint or professional theatres? How do they start to embrace that work now? Well, we were, on our degree that we teach, it's about making your own theatre. So we used to have, of course, there's no acting stage screen, but it used to be called theatre and professional practice. And our students had to be, like, they had to keep budgets, they had to make their own poster, they had to do marketing, they had good tours. You know, it was about... Back to Queen's Drums, but something Back again. to this whole thing about, you, you need to be interested in everything, even in the front of house. So our students run front of house, you know, as well, because the audience's experience begins the minute they see the poster. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That, that's the yeah. moment where they make that's a decision. The journey begins, Are they going to come and see you or not? Yeah. And then the minute they walk into the theatre, if there's a crisp packet on the ground and there's gum in the seat, you're yeah. you've losing. Broke, you've broken the moment. You've broken the moment. Yeah. So when we worked in Miami, it was quite odd seeing our students and the Miami students because um, our students tidied their theatre for them. Uh -huh. You know, before the show yeah. and did their own warm up while the Miami students kind of arrived a bit late. Whereas our <coughs> students were like, and uh, this guy from Miami, one of their tutors went, you guys are so intense. There must be a really hardcore course. And I'm going, <laughs> it's not. We have a really good time. We're, yeah, we're... Yeah. But I think my job is to get people as excited about stuff as Sean got me. You know, my job is to get them excited and to encourage them yeah. uh, in the way that I got excited and encouraged. And I think it is... Like, at the minute, people are very jaded about theatre and you hear stuff from the government about the value of the arts and stuff like that. Uh, and I think you need to listen to young people and what they want. 
and I see a completely different story when I hear grown-ups my age and older telling them what they want yeah, yeah. it's very different than what I get boots on the ground them telling me what they want and I think we'd be much better off if we listened to them <laughs> rather than listen to the people older than us well listen look, looking back to that new point you script there was a lot of listening done then a yeah. lot of learning done then a lot of experience Tom, to you, congratulations on what you've achieved. It's phenomenal. I love this pioneering work that you do, and I think we're going to see a lot more of it. We're going to see a lot more so. of that globalization of theatre, bringing think... huge different dimensions to the experience for people. Because you're right, you know, that sort of Zoom world that people live in, yeah. how do we make that real theatre? And that, that's something that you're working I, on and doing. For years, I've been teaching Japanese theatre. I've never been to Japan. I'm not Japanese, obviously, you know me, I'm not Japanese. My mic drop moment is when I can get a class in Japanese theatre to the place that I'm working, and then I'll go, and then I'll know it's worked. Then I'll know that's the point of the whole thing, is you shrink the world, and you do it in a way that's not, not lesser. You do it in a way that's as good, you know. So we're delighted at what you made out of yourself as a kickstarted by a new point and the whole, yeah. the, the whole building that you have in the water facilities. <laughs> yeah. And we're very grateful, first of all, for you coming to our show last night. And uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure. And uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's, great, it's great to know that you didn't endure it, that you actually enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, for the tour of all of this, we're, we're mad jealous. <laughs> all in will stab you. Honestly, I'm going to move in. All at some stage. If I worked here, I wouldn't go home. Yeah. Simple as that. I never go home anyway. <laughs> <laughs> stuck. And with I new point, don't forget here. once in, you're never out. Right. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah. <laughs>